all right so today i'm here in my dirt box canopy truck camper um trying to get my truck camper ready for winter mode currently this is my summer setup right um i have a 400 amp liton battery they're not self-heated um, i do love the capacity of them however i'm gonna switch them out to the liton 12 volt 200 amp hour with self-heating function I did the research, the dimension of that is pretty close to the 400 amp hour or 100 amp hour battery in parallel. So I'm going to switch them out so that I can, I'll be able to charge my batteries uh, during the winter time, either from solar or from the 12 amp uh, battery charger. I'm, um, I'm not sure how it will be charged through solar. In the winter time, I do have 400 watt panel on the top, so it could be charged from solar just depending on the amp, uh, the current, right? I, I don't know if it, if it has to reach the 20 amp threshold to, for the self-heating mechanism to start or any power would uh, trigger the self-heating and just slowly heat it up i will definitely do some research on that all right so see five minutes later i was able to get the batteries out uh, as you see these uh, x minis are really small um, which is good it's really maneuverable instead of pulling the whole bat like if it's a 400 amp power that's probably close to 100 pounds i'm definitely not able to personally move that in in and out so with these it's so so coming in I just have to store them in the garage and uh, put the 200 amp hour self-heating batteries in for winter all right see the size comparison here we got a um that's two of the 100 amp hours um, non-self-heating and that's the 200 amp hours single unit self-heating so it's definitely bulky um but i'm pretty sure there's insulation there's battery or there's heating wrap or heating pad in there, you know, wrapping around the battery, which takes up a lot of space. So I would rather have something usable during the winter time because from where I live, it gets down to like single digits at least for several weeks. Or I'll be survived with uh, these diesel heaters I'm testing. They need power, right? They need power and, and the power needs to be charged. So that's why I'm getting these uh, self-heating batteries. It's such an easy swap. I can just literally swap these out, put that in. I have a 250 amp rated um anderson plug quick disconnect uh, i can just easily swap these out and swap that in all right so this is the 200 amp power lead time self-heating battery i'm gonna have it just in that spot it should fit perfectly maybe like a little smaller but i have the strap to uh, tighten it uh, down voila it fits in there perfectly got the gap it's a little bit of room but my base is uh, perfect too. I mean, it fits, right? I can just strap them down. Shouldn't go anywhere. All right, this is uh, much neater than the four battery setup. All I need to do is to connect a positive and negative, and that's it. Like, there's no other wires. I like the setup. But it's, it's a little bit heavier, right? Yeah, so now it's charging at, um, let's see, it's 13, 13.5 volts charging with a solar at 180 watts, 190 watts. Should be charged up in a day. Um, we'll see. It's definitely secured. All right, so now I want to show you the uh, solar setup of my truck. I do have a 400 watt uh, Renogy solar panel. Uh, it's bifacial. So it's, it's absorbing solar energy from the top and bottom. And I believe the silver top really helps in terms of uh, reflecting the sunlight. It's mounted on top of two extruded aluminum bars. Uh, they're, I think, 1530. Uh, you can get away with uh, smaller ones, or I could mount them more flush. However, if I do, the length of the solar panel is too big. It's gonna start flexing like in the middle there, like up and down. I don't really like that. Yeah. So I just sacrificed a little bit of height, probably like an, an inch. And it's very sturdy. I drilled the side of the bar um, and then put the L-Track uh, bolts from the bottom. This went really well. Is that a little bit of rust? Damn it. Uh, yeah, so that's that. And then the wire, see there's only one wire coming out of the solar panel, which is good because I don't like multiple wires from multiple panels. That sound. Of course, my neighbor's uh, generator. 
So the wire comes out this way and goes into the camper in that hole. I had to drill that hole. It's about an inch and a half, I think. I just bought this uh, solar gland on Amazon. I can put the link in the description. Uh, I did drill another hole. Uh, I had another set of wire, but then I decided not to use it. So I just kind of taped it off. Um, and that's the entry point. See how, how it looks like. I did put extra tape around the wires sheathing um, so that it doesn't being damaged or, or you know, scratched from the metal right there. All right, so I'm inside of the camper. I just closed myself off because my neighbor's generator is a little loud and uh, I can't stand with anything that's louder than me. So here I am. Um, just keep going with the setup. So that's the solar. Solar wire coming in from the wall from outside. That feeds all the way to with a, uh, what is it called, MP4 connector. So I can quickly disconnect it and then plug that to my portable power stations if I needed to. So that's a kill switch. Um, I can easily uh, disconnect the solar that way. That goes into the, uh, what is it called, Victron MPPT 150. And then that goes into my bus bar, positive and negative. So my bus bar positive there, negative there. And the negative goes to my uh, another, what is it called, Victron Smart Shot. That goes directly to the negative side of my battery here. And the positive from the battery goes to the kill switch, main kill switch. I can turn that off by just one switch. And that goes to the positive bus bar. And from the bus bar, um, there's three... Uh, what's it called? Kill switch or uh, kill switches? One you you already saw is the uh, is to the solar. Um, the other one is actually to the 12 volt controller panel control. Uh, it has a lot of uh, ports here. That's 12 volt DC, and it has several Anderson outputs, which is awesome. And it, I believe it's rated like to a 50 amp, which is good. Um, and then this one goes to my 2000 watt energy inverter so yeah so it's pretty simple oh i do have another one that goes to my oxygen control panel from that that's the fuse all the way to the side and all the way up and here i just find it easier this way to control because i do want something that i can reach easily from the back of the truck and that controls my diesel heater uh, and all the lights and accessory that accessory button controls to oh that fell off this little quick charge charge station that i did that's that i can easily charge my accessories my lights my flashlight my cell phone from here that's 12 volt so that's my control panel or electrical board that i made completely by myself and i did all the wiring it's paying the you know a and then the plastic glass i bought from amazon as well this one is to prevent my son from uh, you know poking around or being shocked uh and that's the uh, 100 or 250 amp anderson plug that i was talking about look how beefy that is yeah and uh yeah so the diesel heater is also connected to like i said the back of the uh oxygen control panel over there in, the, in that box the thing I like about it is it's quick modular, so it's quick to, uh, it's quick disconnectable. I already showed you that you know when I had my battery swap, I just easily unscrewed these two, changed the battery, that's it. Or I could do that, but I don't need to. Um, and it's self-sustained because my 400 watt solar panel can always keep my batteries, even the 400 amp power ones, charged during the summertime. And now it's going to have no problem keeping this one charged or topped off uh, because this is only a 200 amp hour. Even during winter time, I don't think that will be a problem. And I'm pretty proud of my diesel heater. I'll go over that in a, in a later video. Oh, my neighbor's uh, generator stopped. That's awesome. Let me get out. show you the uh so that's the the board for all the wirings goes into the control board for the ox beam and this is the air, little air fryer i love air fryers because it's so easy to make a meal especially with, uh, with the kids and everything 
See, that's my charging station. My battery is everything charged. Oh, the lights, the lights are uh, GoFlux. Uh, I really like this brand. It's tricolor dimmable. Here, I'll show you. White, red, amber, and dim. I prefer this over the Kingpin because Kingpin is a little bulky. It's turnable, which is great, but and it's diffused. But this one, I really like the low profile of that. Uh, let me show you the diesel heater side of the door. Oh, it's heavy. It has seven gallons of water in it right now. Look at how strong the side doors are. Um, yeah, so the electrical goes in there. And my control panel for my diesel heater is also here. So it's like kind of hidden. No problem. You see what that is? That's when during the winter time, if I need it, it's gonna blow down and directly heat up the battery. How smart am I? Oh, it's pretty strong. So yeah, so that's my electrical setup. Oh yeah, the Terra Quest off-road bench. Uh, it does everything pretty well. That's the cover for that. Normally I just put that over and that's, there's another uh, compartment here. I just put my diesel heater stuff in there. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.